Anthony and welcome to another episode of The Commute. Where I will be your driver. And I will be your passenger. Uh, so I got a story about a loophole here. Uh, in Switzerland, a teenager who was 16 was arrested for secretly filming a woman in a dressing room, right? You're sticking the camera underneath and oh, okay. watching this 21 year old girl get dressed. So she sees him filming, she looks down, sees his camera, and uh, freaks out, calls cops, gets arrested. Well, he was found not guilty because he was charged with secretly filming. Mm -hmm. And since the woman saw the camera, he wasn't, he wasn't secretly filming her. And they let him go. That's insane. It would have been secret if she had never right, seen it. Right, exactly. If, if she went home and saw this online, but I guess maybe it's got to be through something else, like a, like a peephole like essentially or something. he was in the open. Yeah. But still, it doesn't make it right. I mean, you got to charge him with something, you know? Yeah. Eye-raping a girl or something, yeah. you know? Like, I don't know. They said that, uh, let's see. It's a, it's a law that was introduced in July. Like, I guess in Switzerland, they never pre like decided to press charges or something like this. Mm -hmm. And since July, 12 people have been charged under the law, but there's only been one conviction. So I, I don't know if they're all getting that way with that loophole. They didn't really say how the other people got away with it, but yeah, so just quit trying to be a peeping Tom and just fucking open the door and gotcha, bitch. Yeah, we're I, I am publicly filming you. <laughs> they need to, I guess, tweak the law. Yeah, they do. You know, to some point. But I guess that's the thing, you know, that's that's the other end of the spectrum in, like, a more liberal environment where, you know, sure, you don't have, you know, uh, who knows, whatever, you know, guns or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you want to say on the one end. But then on the other end, you've got, <coughs> you know, people are so walking on eggshells to fashion laws that can't really yeah. do anything about you know something like that and really you could say you could go after the store for not having security and they're telling you you can go in sure. here and get naked mm -hmm. and there's an access point for somebody to easily stick a camera in yeah and why not just have a closed door like right. or, you know like a closet and there's like an that. assumption of privacy right yeah i don't know yeah you know, yeah the doors lock so you have to open them from the inside or with a key mm -hmm. but you have a two foot gap and I can see when the girl drops her panties when it's a good opportunity to right. you know that's, that's one like the video I saw when I was like this dude was going into bathrooms and uh, he just had like a like a water pump or something <laughs> and as soon as like the dude would sit down and like in the stall next to him he'd like pump the water over there so it looked like he was pissing all over the place <laughs> the cops were like freaking out <laughs> yo what are you doing yo <laughs> that's the thing today it was a uh when there's stupid ice bucket challenge things uh -huh. and this guy's getting ready and he does his little speech and he stands under his roof and his buddy's on the roof of the bucket and you know, he's supposed to dump it on his head uh -huh. and he, he just starts pissing on his head. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> that <guy> went nuts. <laughs> I saw one like that too the other day where it was this guy and he was talking about all these, you know, whoever called him out for it and I'm calling out these people to do the ice bucket challenge. These kids go behind him. They dump this bucket over his head, and it's just piss. Like, the whole oh. bucket's filled with piss. Oh, God. So, same kind of thing, except, oh. like, a gallon of piss. I saw this one thing. It was this dad. Yeah, he does these videos where he's always pulling pranks on his son. He's, like, 10-year-old son. Uh -huh. And... He nominated him for the sleeping ice bucket challenge. So he waited for his son to fall asleep. And then he just woke him up by dumping a whole thing of ice water on him. Oh my gosh. And he, kept he was like, ah, ah, This kid's freaking out. It was great. And then he this other one. The kid, man, he just fucking screams. He must scare easy. He put on a, uh, a full face gas mask. Uh -huh. And he went in the bathroom. The kid was in the shower. And he gets a cup of water and he dumps the water over, you know, over the shower of the kid. He's like, oh man, dad! And he opens up the curtain and sees his dad wearing the gas mask and he's like, ah! And he falls down. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this guy 
guy's a genius, man. Just picking on his kid. Oh. Uh, yeah, there's a story here. Uh, I got a little respect for this guy. In Fort Myers restaurant called the Mad Fresh Bistro, they have banned ketchup for all their patrons over the age of 10. How do you regulate that? And it says on the menu, the chef reserves the right to refuse service of ketchup. Uh, they say their logic is they season their food well and it should not be smothered by a processed tomato based condiment. This, that's what I'm saying. I love this guy. <laughs> I was like, wow. And they're saying that you assume before you even get your food, and I know so many people do this before they even taste something, mm -hmm. pour a bunch of salt on it, pour a bunch of ketchup on it. You haven't even tasted it yet. Yeah. You're not giving, why should I even cook the food? Right. If you're just gonna fucking, you wanna make your own shit, make your the kitchen, yeah. make your own shit. And uh, he said, uh, to, or I'll tell somebody, if I make something that's like, it might need a little bit of something, I'll yeah, say. Yeah, I'll say, here's some pepper or you salt. Know, I, this is how I like it, but mm -hmm. you might need. He says he understands people love their ketchup, but be ready. If you're over 10 years old, ketchup will not be provided. Mm -hmm. Also, salt will not be provided either now. He's upped it to salt as well. That's good. He says, just he's like, I just want you to trust me. Mm -hmm. He's like, taste the food. Uh, we know what we're doing. You know? But then again, you know, it's on the you know customer to have that. Yeah, yeah. It's not for him to... But it, it, I like they put it on the menu. Mm -hmm. It's a thing. Yeah, it's now, when you know when you go thing. in there, yeah, that's the deal. You know, uh, makes sense to me. I don't, you know. Yeah, I'm not gonna fight them on it. This now, this I don't get. Like it's one thing you order a nice meal, mm -hmm. you're not gonna put ketchup on it. They said this isn't the only entity with a strong stance on ketchup. A Chicago newspaper man, uh, Mike Rico, wrote about the placement of ketchup on the city's hot dog stands. He's saying, uh, I won't condemn anyone for putting ketchup on a hot dog. This is the land of the free. Sure, it would be disgusting and perverted, and they would be shaming themselves and their loved ones, <laughs> but under our system of government, it is their right to be barbarians. A yeah, hot dog's a different thing, though. How's that? It's a tube steak, man. You don't put you don't put ketchup on tube steak. I mean, I usually don't either, but you, you put condiments on ketchup, right? Condiments. What? Like, what do you? Or uh, not a ketchup on a, on a on hot, hot dog. dog? Yeah. Well, it's just another condiment. It is, to a point. You know. I don't know. Mustard. Nah, it's not for me. But I. You relish. Know, that's that's taking a uh, a thing a bit far. You know, his uh, quest to remove it. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing you're not going to tell people they can't put ketchup on. Yeah. It's a fucking hot dog. You know. It's. Yeah, but again, I mean, that's. I guess I see that more as a kid's thing, too. I mean, I don't... Do you put ketchup on hamburgers? No. No? See, I put them on hamburgers. Yeah. But it doesn't always have to be that way. I mean, I put a ton of stuff on hamburgers. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, but, you usually uh, don't put any kind of sauce or anything on... on uh, really anything now. I'm trying to think. I use mustard more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, not really big on mayonnaise. I like it occasionally. I mean, there's I, certain things I'll put it on, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, BLT. Mm -hmm. I'll put a little mayo on the toast. Yeah. I don't mind it on a hamburger sometimes, but not not every time. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not my go to thing for no, that. No, that's just like ketchup. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Some people like the mix, like they'll mix the ketchup with the mayo. That's put good. Put it on stuff. That's good. I actually had that recently on a cheesesteak. Yeah. That was good. That was real good on the cheesesteak. What is with the fucking traffic today, man? Friday, these people are just insane. Yeah, but the beach is over, man. It's not supposed to be like this. <laughs> Give it up! The beach is over. It's supposed to rain all weekend, too. Is it? Know. Yeah. Starting like now. Well, I didn't know that. They didn't say that two fucking days ago. Yeah. Uh, I think Sunday is supposed to be nice, though. That's good. But tonight and tomorrow afternoon, it's supposed to rain its ass off. Yeah. Guess them bushes ain't getting trimmed. We are. <laughs> oh well. It's Madden season. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's see what happened on this day a long time ago. September 5th, 1836. Sam Houston is elected president of the Republic of Texas. 
which earned his independence from Mexico in a successful military rebellion. So they had a president at one point. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. It was kind of interesting, like his his like backstory. Like he was born in like Virginia and his, grew up in like Tennessee, and he. I think he ended up running away from home. He lived with this uh, Cherokee tribe for a while, and like bounced all around. He was like a he was like a lawyer for a while, and then he was you know a governor, and then he took up like the uh, the Cherokee cause and like took it to Washington. And while he was in Washington, the president at the time sent him to Texas to you know help the settlers and stuff in Texas try to get their independence from Mexico and while he was down there that whole thing kicked off the settlers ended up putting him in charge of the Texas army mm. and the you know one of the first battles was the Alamo and that was kind of a setback for him but they came back and you know brought it all back around they you know won their independence I guess later. because it was him he's, he's gonna get the job you know yeah I mean I know of Sam Houston I mm-hmm no idea he was ever a president. Yeah. I didn't, didn't even know Texas had a president. Yeah. President of the Texas Republic. I guess it makes sense because they weren't part of America for a while. They had yeah. to have a leader. Yeah. And um, he, he got injured or something and recovered in Louisiana and then came back. And that's when they made him president of the Republic. And then the um, Civil War came around and he was back and forth like in office I, I think they ousted him because he was um, speaking on behalf of the uh, he didn't want to join the um, the south in uh, seceding oh, okay. so he didn't agree with that so they ousted him then and then seceded hmm. that's pretty cool Man, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff to look at about him and just just Texas history in general. It's kind of a weird outlier as far as yeah. states go, you know, that. California is pretty interesting, too. Their whole yeah, yeah history. California's got a good history. A lot of stuff happened there. Yeah. Take it for granted that they're just states now. Right, you, you think of them as there was land, we said, hey, we're going to turn this into a state. Yeah. People and can go there yeah, now. Their, their history <laughs> is directly tied with, like, the U.S. history, but... It's not. I mean, they're almost, mm-hmm. they're countries unto themselves, and they have the economies to back it up. I mean, those those two states alone are rated among, like, above a lot of European countries in just... So, they have a president capita. of a state or an area. What's it... So, how does it become a state? We buy it, we offer them... Support, like yeah, I mean that—that's what it eventually became. They uh, they signed like a treaty with the U.S. Okay, and that's that's how Texas became a state. But yeah, each one had its own individual. And they got to California. They're like, look, man, you guys are hip. Everybody's doing this. <laughs> become a state. Cornered them in, or that was like that was probably I, I can't remember exactly, but it was, it was probably something that they won from Spain or bought from Spain. Yeah, that land. September 5th, 1774, first session of Continental Congress convenes at Carpenter's Hall in Philadelphia. Hmm. That's something I would have thought would have happened before then. Mm -hmm. You know, in just two years, they put a country together and, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, it it had been. I mean, there was stuff going on before that. Yeah, I mean, it was, all that stuff had been in talks. You kind of need a turn signal to get shit done. A A break signal? Is that what you mean? You want to hear my break? Fucking idiots. And then turn into you? Yeah. I want it. <laughs> uh, this is September 5th, 1972. Six members of the terrorist organization Black September, dressed in Olympic sweatsuits of Arab nations, jumped the fence surrounding the Olympic Village in Munich, Germany, carrying bags filled with guns. Terrorists managed to take nine hostages from the 21 Israeli athletes and officials. They demanded the release of 234 prisoners, but their demands were denied. It was eventually agreed to take the hostages and terrorists to Furzelfeld? 
Furtzelfeld Bruck? Furtzelfeld Bruck? I, I, I put that one in there for you. <laughs> <laughs> airport, the airport, by helicopter and given a plane. German government planned an ambush. Lack of preparation caused some of the government officers to abandon the ambush plan. But the remaining officers arrived or carried out the ambush. So they, so they did it with a short staff. Yeah, they, there there were officers like posted on the plane itself that they oh. were going to get onto. Okay. And those guys were like, okay, there's there's not enough. We didn't have enough time to think this thing through. We're out of here. They like deserve. So the ones on the planes that see it. <laughs> wow. That's when the job got real for them. Uh, we we weren't prepped for this. Uh, yeah. I'm going home for dinner. Um, three terrorists were killed initially, but the others hid out of range. One of them threw a grenade into the helicopter, killing five of the hostages instantly. The other fired on another helicopter, killing the remaining hostages. 20 hours after the initial attack, five terrorists, 11 athletes were dead. I didn't know that many got killed. Yep. Three were taken prisoner, but set free a month later when another group hijacked Lufthansa 727 and demanded their release. Israeli or Israel retaliated with airstrikes against Syria and Lebanon and assassination squads to kill members of Black September. So were they not? A th- was that the end of Black September? Or yeah, no, I don't think there was anything else by Nothing. that group after that. Yeah, that was a that was a thing, man. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see that the uh, movie? Yeah, that yeah. movie with Eric Bana. Yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah. That was real good. It was intense. Yeah, it was intense. Yeah. The uh, they had to be crazy to watch on TV. Like that was, you know, a, a big news thing. You know, yeah. the time the fucking Olympics, man. Yeah, you got that shit going on. Well, when they first broke in there, too. I mean, like, two of the guys died, like, right away. They, they like, shot them to death. Like, as they were they were trying to, like, shut the doors and, like, keep them out and stuff. Uh-huh. They got shot, but, like, you know, that bought some guys time to, like, get out, jump out the windows and run. Yep. Uh, okay, this, this, is, this was pretty cool. A snake measuring 16 inches long. You know me and snakes, man. We don't fucking we don't we don't mesh. Snake measuring 16 inches long was discovered in China, making its grand entrance by clinging to the bathroom wall with a clawed talon. There's a picture of the snake with the talon. It's actually got like a claw uh-huh. coming the fuck out of it. Uh, its life was cut short uh, when she beat the beat it to death with a shoe as it attempted to defy evolution and scurry across the wall using its single foot. Preserving the specimen in alcohol was turned over to the Department of Life Sciences at West Normal University in Nanchang. Uh, as they said, the cause of the foot remains unknown, though an autopsy may reveal why. The biological anomaly is in a way similar to the growth of an extra head, which shares similarities in the way humans develop conjoined twins. Uh, they don't attack each other. Snake has two heads. And some snake species still do have the small legs, like on their underbelly and stuff. It's, they're real tiny, but they're still there. Yeah, I thought they had, like, scales. So that's what I was trying to figure. Like, two heads, okay, a snake's supposed to have a fucking head. Mm-hmm. Where's a fucking talon come from? Yeah, it's, yeah some of them do. You they know, still like, have real tiny, like, leg things, oh. like, real close to their body and real tiny anymore. Let me tell you what. If snakes start fucking growing legs like this and fucking talons where they can climb across <laughs> shit and still fucking slither and be fast as fuck, yeah. I will make it my goal. My new job is going to be snake extermination. Yeah. And I'm going to kill every fucking snake. And when they're all dead in this country, I'm moving on. The whole I'm going to rid the world of fucking snakes. Yeah. So this shit can't fucking happen. Single man. Ugh. Taking on the world. Oh, God. That's disgusting. Look at that fucking thing, man. Yeah. It's fucking big. Are you out of your mind? Beat it with a shoe, huh? Man, I would have. Oh. I wouldn't have beat it with a shoe. I would have fucking ran. And then I would have had to get a blowtorch 
and I would just fucking. I, under, I understand now. They see people like burn their houses down, trying to kill a spider with fire. Uh -huh. My house would be burnt to the fucking ground. This snake, I just sprinkle blowtorch. Once the fire gets out of hand, I'm out. That's gonna take you a long time to get rid of all the snakes. That's all I'm saying. It's gonna take. Oh, it's gonna be my life goal. I mean, it, it will take you know, a long time. Man. It's gonna take a real long fucking time. I mean, all the running away in between. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna open the company. I'm not okay. gonna be doing it. Yeah, oh, right. Just, you know, you're just gonna fund. Yeah, you're fucking nuts. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. And you know, I get bonuses on you know size of the snake, yeah. and how many snakes you bring back a day, volume of kill. Yes. Yeah. You bring them all back. I'll eat. I'll eat a fucking snake. Sure. Snake is fucking good. I'll eat the fuck out and I'll enjoy it. Like ah, who won this battle, motherfucker? Yeah, snake stupid. And especially if you kill them with fire, it's already cooked. Yeah. Just pick it up and eat it, man. It's meat on a stick. <laughs> right off the non bone. <laughs> All right, I, that uh, one you can hold it by its claw. <laughs> I would keep the claw on a keychain. Yeah. Just a remembrance. Show those other snakes who's boss. Yeah, snakes grow legs now. Look what happened to your buddy. <laughs> Look what happened to your forefather. I'll stop your evolution. <laughs> Piece of shit. Because that's the thing. Like, what if this snake had, well, what if it had babies or something? Mm -hmm. Laid some fucking eggs. Now you got a whole family of legged snakes. Potentially, yeah. Going around. Um, and at 16 inches, though, that's, that's not huge, so it probably wasn't adult enough. Maybe it was. I don't know. It's big enough. It depends what kind of snake it is. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not that big. Was it? It's not that big. It's foot, foot and a half. Yeah, I ain't fuck with a snake that big. No? <laughs> fuck no, dude. Not even with a shoe? Fuck not with a shoe. With a shovel or a rake. <laughs> I got. I need distance yeah. between me. I got little feet. Right? You know what I mean? Like, I got to get pretty close to hit it with my shoe. Maybe if I was like Magic Johnson or something or mm -hmm. Shaquille O'Neal, I'll use one That's of them big shoe. fucking yeah. shoes. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah. distance. But that, God, I couldn't, no way, man. I'd be screaming like that little 10-year-old boy in this video. Yeah! <laughs> I cannot do snakes. Snakes or sharks. Yeah. But snakes are a real fucking thing that can creep up on you. Yeah, you know, the shark is just going to leave you be. I mean, it's not well, unless I, you're... Here's how, I go, here's how I don't worry about sharks. I don't get in the water. Problem solved. <laughs> Done. Yeah. I used to get in the water even though I was pretty sure the sharks never fucked around with anybody. Mm -hmm. They're fucking coming north. And these fucking sharks. Why are getting warm, man? They're gotta, coming up. They're coming up. And they're smelling the fucking Massachusetts seals or whatever the fuck they are up there. <laughs> and they're off of Maine or wherever the fuck these seals like this. They got a little seal island uh -huh. up in, uh, in the northeast. And these sharks smell them from goddamn Florida come up here and they snack on kids while they're making their trek. <laughs> No way. When I tell my kid that, you don't get in the water, you know why? Why? The shark will eat you. <laughs> I show her jaws. I show her all that shit. This is what happens. <laughs> People fuck with sharks in the yard. No way. Even like in the, uh, you, you ever go in one of those like tunnels you walk through and it's a big shark tank yeah. all around you? Love that. That's fucking awesome. But I can't like breathe. When I'm in there, all I picture is oh, fucking, in the tunnel. Though? Yeah, like this glass is going, and it's not a huge tunnel. You can see the end of the tunnel. Yeah, but I just picture the glass breaking. I'm fucking shark food. Yeah, and sharks just funneling in there. Yeah, and they're all going for me. It's like ten sharks. Oh man, yeah. what's going on there? Coppers. All right, so this is pretty cool. Uh, there's a secret underground community that was started in 1975 by Oberto Falco Eraldi, based upon visions he saw in his childhood. He started with 24 people who helped him build elaborate, ornate structures he called the Temples of Humankind. Uh, when he was finally discovered by Italian authorities, this is in the underground of Italy, mm -hmm. uh, it was dubbed the eighth wonder of the world because it was so just elaborate and ornate. Uh, it now has 600 people living there, as well as its own currency and its own university. What? And you can go move there, you can go live there, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't get it. There's like, you have to take these courses on like, 
how humans should treat each other and all this other goofy stuff. Mm -hmm. But then you can live, and it's, I mean, look at this place, dude. It's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's how they fucking live. Wow. Yeah, you just live underground forever. You fucking go to school underground. <laughs> Bunch of fucking mole people. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to get, I don't, I'd have to be able to come out. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's like, hey, once well, you live in the, under the Catch. tunnel. Well, once you go down with the bolt people, you, you come back never out. leave. Let's put it this way. I'd like to spend a week there. I'd like to go on vacation there okay, for a there week. Yeah, they should have a hotel. That'd be awesome. And one end, they'll just, they build a hotel and that's where the yeah. visitors can come in. Yeah, you, you can't, you know. Yeah. You can take a tour of our university. Right. Which has to be, what, 10 people in it? I mean, there's 600 people living there. Yeah. How many college kids can you have? And I'd be like, why do I got to go to college? <laughs> you know, I just can't get a job. <laughs> so I'm just going to be a mole person. I just yeah. need to know mole people things. <laughs> and then we go to the other side of it. There's also an underground community uh, under Las Vegas. Under the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, in the flood tunnels that snake beneath the glitz and glamour of the Vegas Strip reside approximately a thousand people. What? Because they're too poor to too poor to afford a place to live, so they go. Well, this is all I can afford, and they go underneath, and they live in these flood tunnels. And it's Full of floods. Well, I mean, they look. Everything's up on fucking crates and shit. There's water constantly on the ground. Oh. Like that's how you live. All their shits and like milk crates. Their bed's just a couple of slabs of wood. They put an old mattress on top of. Uh -huh. It says people come to Vegas and promise of a good job. Some are veterans with PTSD. All of them are living in makeshift shelters built from cast off items they find above ground. This is documented in a book entitled Beneath the Neon by Matthew O'Brien. <laughs> How to join this club? You probably don't want to. <laughs> That's all it is. You just gotta be in Las Vegas and broke as fuck. Uh, however, it says if you would like to help those stuck living in those conditions, you can donate to O'Brien's Shine a Light Foundation through help of Southern Nevada. But it's just crazy, you know, there's a thousand people that live underneath of... Yeah. Well, that's a lot of people, man. That's the city, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people in that city, but... Right. And they look happy. I mean, they don't look like drug addicts or anything. <laughs> they just look like normal folk. Well, they found that one couple that was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're actually new. <laughs> they just moved there yesterday. They're actually part of the crew. Just... <laughs> Can we borrow your bed for a second? <laughs> yeah, let's get a picture of these people in a month. <laughs> good Christ. Yeah, that's... Probably a good diet plan, though. Like, what are they... Like, are they just beggars? I don't... I don't know. Or did they have jobs where all they can get is, like, a McDonald's job and you can't afford... A place to live in Vegas, working at McDonald's? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, fuck, there was a girl there become a prostitute. Yeah, could be what goes on there. I guess I would rather be a prostitute and live in above ground in a fucking house mm -hmm. than working at McDonald's and living in a goddamn the sewer. Underground in a sewer. You know? A flood tunnel. I'll suck a dick to have a house. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Look, look at what we go through every day to have a house, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, we're practically there. I might rather suck a dick than do what we do every fucking day. <laughs> I, I really have that option? Yeah. I'll be done by 9 a.m.? <laughs> Fuck, I got my whole day ahead of me? Alright. Bring on the cock. <laughs> Maybe. I can't make that decision until it's actually in front of me. Yeah. You know, the cock or the decision? <laughs> Probably both. If the decision is in front of me, and I say, yeah, I'm going to go ahead with it, you still got to deal with the cock. Yeah. Then there's got to be a cock in front of you, and you might think you can do it until you have to grab it. Yeah, who was you that know? comedian that did that? It, was, it might have been uh, George Carlin or something. About what? <laughs> like, a cock in front of you. <laughs> What was the one thing that the guy did? Uh, I can never remember his fucking name. The British comedian. That's... He was in the new Muppet movie. 
Oh, Ricky Gervais? Yeah, Ricky Gervais. He was talking about, uh, what was he saying? Something about a dad telling a son he had to be gay. And he's like, how do you know you don't like it? He's like, how do you know you don't like it? So he's like, then you suck your dick. He's like, no dessert till you suck your dick. <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 don't just lick it. He's like, you gotta, you gotta go at it. <coughs> he's like, don't put it down if you haven't tried it. <laughs> you suck your dick right now. <sighs> All right, well that'll do it for this episode of the commute. <laughs> Uh, make sure you like and subscribe on YouTube and Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Driver Passenger. Check out our website, 2commute.com, T-W-O, commute.com. And send us an email at the commute podcast at comcast.net. Hope to see you soon.